Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have one of our experts on the show today. She has her own podcast on our show, and she also is part of our podcast community. It's Catherine Myers, and she's an accountant, and she has she's just amazing. I can't say any more. She just has such great knowledge when it comes to all these different topics in accounting. You don't realize how many different things accountant umbrellas under. There are so many aspects that even can affect your personal life and not just your business life. And today she's going to share and she's going to talk about accountability, which is so important. People don't realize the importance of accountability. It affects your personal life and it affects your business life. And today she's here to share about accountability and how to imply it in your life and different ways that you could actually use it in your daily life that will actually help you grow in your personal and in your business world. So Catherine, it is a pleasure having you on today, as always. And, you know, so tell us a little about accountability and, you know, what you were thinking and, you know, because you had a whole thing you were talking about it that was so amazing before the show. Share it with everybody and tell us a little about it. Oh, you're so kind. Well, thanks for having me back. I got to tell you, though, Stacey, use some pretty powerful language calling me an accountant and we're talking about accountability. So, you know, that usually those two things make people scatter like cockroaches whenever we start talking <laughs> about those items. So yeah. for you listeners who have made it this far, congratulations. Like, thank you so much. Because um, it's true. You know, no one really wants to talk about that word accountability. And, uh, you know, what I, what I want to talk about with, you know, the time that we have today is how accountability truly needs its own reputation management. It needs a PR, it needs something because it has been used in corporate as a stick to beat people with, and it doesn't have to be that way. It, it yeah. really doesn't. Um, you know, what I find in, in my brand of accountability really at its simplest form is, is taking ownership of your own actions and being responsible for the outcomes. And I've, you know, really taken to heart this uh, mindset and this approach. And, and quite frankly, you know, to just to say it, you know, you can have a high level of accountability in your business, mm -hmm. in the culture of your own ecosystem of how you operate your home and how you operate with your family and your kids and all that good stuff. And you can do all of this without being called a bitch. And it is possible. It really is, is possible. So um, I, I want to just kind of share my story and uh, hopefully that resonates with someone because um, too often accountability is something that people run from. And I, yes. I'm sure you've seen that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so um, when it, when it comes to, so building and talking about accountability at a very top level, it, we're talking about like, that's the cornerstone of integrity and trust. You know, I've got little kiddos and we talk about how, you know, if you want to be trusted with the big stuff, driving yeah. a car, going to your friend's house, you know, going to a party that mom and dad aren't going to, if you want to be trusted with the big stuff, you got to do the little stuff really well, you know, and it starts with unloading the dishwasher and putting your clothes yeah. in, the, in the drawer. It starts the little things but if you're doing what you say you're going to be doing when you say it's going to be doing it, when you're going to be doing it, that's how trust is earned. Yes. And when those actions and those words really align, that's that's what really builds that framework and that trust in in all of your relationships. It is so important. I, I think, to, you know, people don't realize, but accountability starts from when you're young. If you don't start installing accountability into children when they're young, you know, they're going to have a hard time really developing a sense of accountability as they grow older. It's going to affect them in their high school years when they're getting ready to possibly, you know, develop their future career or when they go to college and they're trying to, you know, figure out their future and their life. And when they get into the big world and trying, you know, if you go into the business world, you know, you need to be accountable. If you're in a corporate world, you still need to be accountable. It is part of your life. It is a, a big segment of your life if you want to be successful. 
Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, this summer, I'm a mom to young kids. And this summer, I put together a, you know, most parents would call it like a chore chart. Um, mm-hmm. I called it an accountability chart. That's, that's what we have <laughs> in our household. And really helping my kiddos understand that there's, I've got three kids. So I made it into three different functions of the household of how to support the household. And one of those roles, I called it outdoor captain. You are accountable to making sure that all of the toys, the chalk, everything is inside the house. The bikes are put away. The garage is neat and tidy. You are accountable to make sure that those things happen. Does that mean that if everyone has a party outside, we've got everything, you know, all the toys out, you know, the the pool floats and everything else out. Does that mean that you're responsible for doing it all? No, that means you are accountable to having the conversation with your friends of, hey, y'all, before we leave, let's pick up after you are accountable to making sure that people honor the way that we run our household. And my kids have really latched on to that. And they're like, oh, my gosh, that is fabulous. And, you know, I've had other moms be like, how do you get your kids to communicate? I'm like, because they are accountable and you treat them young. You don't have to do all of the work, right? Right. But you got to make sure that you're communicating and you're holding other people accountable. And, you know, my son said to one of his friends, you, you don't put away your toys. I don't really want you to come over. And I'm like, that's what I want. That's what I want as a mom. Right. That's but awesome. Like, boundaries, boundaries. Um, but you know, my, my love affair with accountability didn't start with my kids. It totally didn't start with my kiddos. Um, I, I gotta tell you, Stacey, there is, In my 20s, I was given this opportunity to to work as an administrative assistant on executive leadership team. Woo! And one of the tasks that I acquired during my time there was to sit in on meetings, sit, stay, be quiet, you know, all the things, and Mm -hmm. run the run run whatever was on the TV, which typically was an Excel spreadsheet. And I would just sit there and click and move. And, and one of my assignments that I was provisioned was helping professional resource allocation. Okay. So what does that mean? That means like, oh, when we have clients and we've got work that needs to get done, we've got the right people in the right seats doing the right work at the right time. You know, that's, yeah. that's an over, oversimplification, but, and my job was to sit there be silent and make sure that it got done. Well, I'm not as well behaved as, as I probably should have been. And what I observed in this weekly meeting was these younger professionals coming in to build a schedule of this is next week when we come in, these are the things that we're going to work on. And what I observed is towards the end of that meeting, the managers would walk in and it was like this heavy energy that just kind of sucked and zapped the air out of the room. And what it felt like is, do you have a cat? Have you ever had a cat, Stacey? They're mean. I've had two dogs. Two Mm -hmm. dogs. Okay. Well, cats, before they kill their prey, they play with it for a while. They pounce and they play and they like do all these things before they actually just put the mouse out of its misery. Like that's how it felt in these meetings with these managers coming in and pouncing on their people. Why didn't, yeah. is, why isn't this done? Why isn't that done? That needs to get done. I had this plan next week and it really put these guards up. So over time, yeah. I identified that, you know, what the managers really wanted and what the frontline individuals could provide, we, we had a misalignment. Yes. And I realized that my role was to ask questions. My role was to assist holding people accountable that was not harsh or yes. punitive. Um, and what that meant was being supportive and consistent. So rather than just showing up on Fridays, running the screen, like a well-behaved, you know, 20 year old, I took that embodiment of everything that are, that's on our front lines to-do list. That's on my to-do list because I'm the keeper of the list. Right. And if I wait till Friday to ask them how they're doing on their to-do items, it's too late. Yeah. They're backed into a corner. And so I have this privilege and this bird's eye view to be able to make accountability, not a Friday morning at 9 a.m. meeting, but to make it a Monday through Friday lifestyle. And some of the things that I noticed was when you, you know, 
pop it on Monday. Hey, Jim, how are we doing on this? You ready to rock and roll? Did you need anything? Can I get you anything? He would look at me like, I'm good. I'm okay. And then on Wednesday, I'd pop into his office again. Be like, hey, Jim, how we doing? You got this, this, and this done? And it'd be like, oh, I got those two things done, but I'm going to be late on this. And by the time then we got to Friday, everything was calm because Monday through Friday, we've been working together where I, as an outside agent, have been helping mm. this team do the things that they were supposed to do, um, which is not uncommon. I'm probably one of those obnoxious people that I could never do your job. I could never be a frontline person. I could never manage. I don't have those technical skill sets, mm -hmm. but I'm like the air traffic controller, right? I'm right. not the pilot. I, I, I'm not the pilot of this show. It's not my plane, but I can help yeah. you get where you need to be and, 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 and do those things. So, um, that first job that I was doing this accountability work, I remember so distinctly, I was sitting at my desk and I, I had one of my favorite, favorite senior managers at the time that I've been working with now for four years. He was bringing through two interns, giving them a tour of the office. And he's like, and meet Catherine. She's our accountability cop around here. And at first he said, I was like, how dare you? How dare you call me that? I <laughs> felt like I was the proverbial, like, corporate nerd that you wanted to shove into a locker like that's not a nice thing to say accountability yeah. cop like hall monitor <laughs> <laughs> but what he was invoking was the great need to have someone who is not just having an accountability meeting with you because who wants that like ugh, i don't want that yeah but when you are holding people accountable you're acting as their belt and their suspender system. You are acting as their support that is consistent. You are in it together. When you change your vocabulary from we're having an accountability meeting on Friday to, mm -hmm. hey, Monday through Friday, I'm here. We're going to be involved. We're going to be engaged. I'm in it with you. And saying we statements yeah. is super powerful. No yeah. one wants to be, you know, put down. So, you know, lovingly, I went from someone telling me that I was an accountability cop, the nerd that was going to get shoved in the corporate, you know, lockers, the, you know, no one wants to work with like the, the hall monitor that is going to go yeah. tattle the mom and dad. But he was saying in a phrase, like, she'll make sure that you always have your shit done and you always look good. And at the end of the right. day, that's what all professionals really want uh, yes. from their team. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's so important to, to just like reword it differently, but you know, I got to tell you, accountability is so important. I know you, you know, it's, it, it sounds like the word of death when you say it, but you know, you know, for me, I, when I got my accountability coach, I 10 X my company and within it, a matter of three to six months, we, we had, we first we tripled and then we 10 x our company. And that was all from having an accountability coach that had worked with us and, and made sure, you know, looked at our plan, helped us tweak our plan and then helped us stay on uh, accountable to the plan that we had devised that was going to be successful as long as we stood on track. So accountability is so important. It really is. So we can we can call it the, the girl, a guy who helps you, you know, help, you know, that guide you along the way or the, the person who really, you know, gets you where you want to be going. You know, you could say it as many ways you want, but it is so vital to any any company, any business, any startup business, any, and it, it is vital to your personal life. You know, it is the standard framework of how we are going to be as a person. If we are accountable from, and we learn accountability at an early age and we carry it through our lives, we will thrive. You know, even if you learn it later on in life, it's not hard to learn how to be accountable. It'll be a little bit more difficult if you don't, you know, have it in the beginning. But like anything else, a little practice makes perfect. And if you start learning how to be accountable and you start learning how to get work together. And I love the idea too, that you say the word we, you know, it's all how we use our verbiage. You know, you could, you could throw orders at people, People are going to back up and not like that at all. Nobody likes to be told what to do and nobody likes to be put under the gun and nobody likes pressure, you know? And so 
you know, when you can word something and really give people credit for what they've done and then say, so look, we still have this and this to, 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 to do. Let's work together and see if we could accomplish this by this date. What a difference it makes. What a difference. You know, it's all in the, in the verbiage. It really is. Yeah, but it's hard. It's really hard work, Stacey. One, oh, yeah. You know, your mom, I'm a mom. How easy is it to yell at your kids? Go pick up your room. Easy, right? <laughs> so easy. Yeah. But how hard is it to say, room's not clean. We had that conversation. Okay. We got to talk about expectations. Hey, these mm -hmm. are the things that I expect of your room. I expect for your clothes to be put away. I expect for your drawers to be shut. Nothing escaping. Would yeah. you agree with me that that, like you and I are good, do you agree like that's how it should be handled in your room? Yes, yeah. I agree. Okay, great. So now that we've made those agreements that you and I are both on the same page, we've got an out of bounds problem where right. you haven't honored your agreement of keeping your room in that manner. So I'd like to yeah. provide that opportunity for you to go and get things away and back up the snuff where they should be. Now that you and I are both on the same page, how does that sound? Oh my God, as a mom, I'm hot. Than a, than a wet hornet, but it's really yeah. hard. And it's the same thing in business. You know, yeah. it takes no energy for a teenager working at a fast food position to yell at another teenager, no effort. Mm -hmm. But it takes a lot of effort and a lot of diligence to be able to hold accountability in that other way. And really what that is, is leadership, right? Yeah. You know, like you said, no one wants to be yelled at or put under the gun. Yeah. So it's hard and it's practicing patience, which I have none of, I have no patience. I have to practice, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's really, it's, it's really tough, but those principles that, you know, you were talking about accountability, you got to use it across all of your life with everyone, including uh, your business, yourself, your business partner, your kids, your spouse. Um, I, I'm a big uh, proponent of that. Uh, no one wants to be in a relationship with someone, with someone who's flaky and the yeah. best part is is that other people want to be held accountable they want it they want someone to be like hey you said you were going to have your homework done last week did you get that yeah. done no mm -hmm. okay how can I help you that's the next sentence that you have not oh you didn't get that done Psh, how come you didn't prioritize that no 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 how can I assist you how can I help you what can I do to support you it changes yes. the game in a very positive way oh yeah a hundred percent when you feel when you when they feel like you're a part of their team and you, they don't feel like you're against them, there's a totally different attitude that comes about it. You know, you know, now they realize, OK, you're on my side. You know, we can do this together, you know, and just having your support, you know, or just even, you know, helping out with a few things that's well appreciated. You know that they they you know, and, and that communication and that bond will grow, you know, between those two people. Yeah. Accountability isn't about being the bad guy, y'all. Like you are the hero, the geek behind the scenes that is helping yeah. others reach their very full potential. That's that's really what it comes down to. But like accountability, I wish there was just a word for it, Stacey. I just wish there was a different word because it makes people run like cockroaches when you say accountability. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, no one likes that. Not at all. Well, I do like you're saying you're not a bitch if you're accountable. That is a is a good. Uh... <laughs> and it works in all varieties and all vernaculars of that sentence, depending on your yeah. punctuation. Uh -huh. So it would totally work. But, you know, that we statement of, you know, how, hey, Stacy, those two reports that are supposed to get delivered, where are we at on on those? Hey, yes. we've got a goal to raise our revenue by 3%. Where are we with that? Asking yeah. that way to your sales team, where are we on that, sends a very clear message that we're in it together. Yeah. Now, another hot accountability tip that I will give is something that I've been doing. And when I when I do it for a new boss, they're like, what? I didn't know that was a service, <laughs> is to tee up communications. Part yeah. of those individuals like myself and you who are hardwired DNA blueprint of high levels of accountability, other people don't have that in their blueprint. And that's okay. It takes all kinds to make this world work, yeah. right? All right. kinds. A hundred percent. That's why we're here, right? That's why I was put on this earth is to help with that, uh, that accountability factor. 
So using we statements is very powerful. And also what I call the, the communication tee up. And mm-hmm. it's a lot friendlier than the per our discussion email, per my last email, per, mm-hmm. no, no, no. Let's put this out in a way of having um, you as the accountability person make communication that is friendly, that is poignant, that is useful, and yes. that is factual, not feelings, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And then providing that to leadership as their tee up of like, this is how you should be communicating this to your team. If you want to get these results, you have to communicate in this way. So it's not just making sure that the people below are doing the things. It's also elevating that leader to have those good communications to build that system. So, you know, uh, you're not just the cop, you are the accountability cop jury you are the defense attorney you're the prosecutor yeah. the halfway house operator you are the accountability system and it's got to be right. holistic for it to work oh 100 100 and i love that i love that we statement you know that 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 is so important you know you know you know where are we in this you know where are, you know you know what's going on you know like how you know how are we doing with this you know you know how long will it take us or how long will you know could we you know like look at look at this project and maybe we could try to see if we can accomplish it by friday and and not let it linger till monday you know is there a possible way we could do that you know it, it just it just seems like you're more of a team when you say that you know and when you're given orders it seems like you know the person and it is just being it's kind of like being pressed against the wall and you're feeling like you're being attacked you know it's totally two different scenarios like emotions that are going on and we react off our emotions and we perform off our emotions so if you are feeling like you're attacked you're going to be working out of fear if you're working out of fear you're not working out of full potential you know so then it, it not only is, is the person hurting who's doing the project it's going to hurt the whole team and, and the company and the business you know whatever it may be you know, so it's really important that we statement is an excellent, excellent way of looking at things because really communication is key. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, what I observed is, you know, in my twenties with great managers, they were great people. Like I wanted to have beers with them. And in fact, I did have beers with them, but when they came in to talking to their team about getting things done in the manner that they should be done, it zapped the energy out of the room because we were using accountability as a, why didn't you get this done rather than an uplifting of, Hey, y'all we're in it. We've got a delivery who can help me. Who's on first, let's get it done. And even as a micro entrepreneur with a small team, you know, it's very, it's very helpful to have an accountability partner that is outside of the organization, someone who's just making sure that you're getting the things done. Yes. But when you first position that to someone, at least for me, I feel restricted. I feel um, like, well, I'm, does that mean I'm not good enough? Does that mean right. I'm not cutting the mustard right now? And it makes me want to just go and crawl into my little hole and be scared. And when yeah. you're scared, you're operating out of fear. Just like you said, you're so constrictive and you're not open and you're not vulnerable and you just hoard things. Yeah. And that is the bad part of accountability. So, you know, if you're struggling with your teams, if you're struggling with your communication, if you feel like I just have to do it all myself because no one else can do it and no one else cares enough to do it, I would really encourage you to go and look at how you're using the framework of accountability to be the you're the belt and suspenders. You have yeah. extreme ownership. Everything yeah. that is on everyone else's to-do list is your responsibility too. Right. So it starts with that leadership, love and attention and yeah. caring and fostering the goodness out of people to do their highest and best level work. That's what you want an accountability partner to help support you with is identifying mm-hmm. what you do so darn great that you deliver every single time. And yes. the things that, you know, you're like, I kind of, I'll, like, I, maybe my, I'll get to them. Those are the things that an accountability partner can help you work through and say, do we have a priority issue? Do we have a genius zone issue? Do we yeah. have a, you just got to eat your vegetables issue? <laughs> like, 
do we just need support? What is that? It's uplifting and it is support. So, you know, I just want to spread the message. You can have a high level of accountability without being shoved into lockers and without being the bitch. You really can. Yeah. Y- you can do it. And if you feel like, you know, it's a negative to be called the accountability cop, know that that's a hero to someone. You are saving yeah. someone's professional life, which transforms their personal life and their finances. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, it, it all ties into one. It all ties into one hundred yeah. percent. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you really wanted to summarize it into some key points, what are some things you'd like to emphasize to get across to the listeners? Well, um, accountability is empowering and powerful and is not a stick to beat people with y'all. If that is one of your arsenals in your toolbox as a weaponry, please kindly take that out and move it to the other pocket. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, (laughs) Two is... Being curious is a very nice um, and added value to people just being curious of, okay, well, why didn't that happen? How can, you know, paint more color for me? Where did we lack on the support? And uh, lastly, my third one is the we statements. The we statements. It is a Mm -hmm. we thing. It is not a you thing. Mm -hmm. It is not an us thing. It is not a them thing. It's a we thing that we are in it together. Um, So really using that vernacular, I think is so important in accountability. You're going to get more out of your people, more out of your own life and out of your business, which ultimately, you know, from an, from an accounting standpoint, will transform your financials to really live that free life, uh, the endless summers that we always strive yes. for. Yes. Because when you are bossing people around and you're giving orders, that just does not work. It goes back to what we were saying early on. It's just going to put person against the wall. They're going to feel trapped. They're going to feel in fear and the job isn't going to get done right. And then you're not going to be able to delegate your responsibilities to others and, and you know, live life more and work less. It's, it's that, that concept is going to go out the window if you are not responding and, and, and talking in that, in the verbiage of the we form, the we statement, you know, you really have to be able to really communicate well with the people that you work with and make them feel special and valuable in your, in your workplace, you know, and yeah, at home too, you know, we're talking about personal life. When you make people feel special, they are more apt to want to please you, you know, especially kids, you know, you see that even with little doggies and cats. If you, if you show them love, they will do everything to please you because they love you. And the same thing with kids and the same thing with grownups when they go to the work world. They, you know, you show them respect, you show them care, you show them that they, they are valued and they will go the extra length for you. It is just, it's just, that's the way the world works. That's the way our mind works. That's the way we react. You know, it's all about the verbiage. It's all about how we treat people. It's all about respect. And it's all about being valued. People want to feel valued. They want to feel like they're on this planet for a reason. Why are we here? You know, do we matter? You know, do I have a purpose in life? You know, they got to make them feel like when they come to work, they have a purpose. They are valued. They are respected. They mean something to this company. And if they feel all these things, they will thrive. And when they thrive, the business will thrive. So these are things that people have to really keep in mind. And it all goes back to that that word that we don't want to say that the cockroaches run away, but it is accountability. It's accountability. And it's and it's being accountable and it's and it's using communication in the right respect, you know, and making people feel good about themselves. You do all these things and you wrap it up in a little bow and you will have a thriving business because that's just the way the world works, you know. So yeah, th- this has been amazing. Now, before we go, I want you to tell everybody about the services you provide because you do a lot of things and they're very valuable. So tell us all about, you know, what you do and what you can offer others. Yeah. So if you love my messaging and you want to to find more, you can obviously find me on the advisor podcast, but also (laughs) I'm the founder over at Unboxed Advisors. So you're going to want to go over to my website, www.unboxedadvisors.com. We work with high achieving uh, entrepreneurs doing personal CFO and COO work um, to have really deep relationships and to go the distance with high earning and high achieving professionals so they can get the attention that they need 
um, with us, you're far more than a tax return. You are, it's your whole family. Um, so that's a little bit about what we do over at Unbox. But I, I thank you, Stacey. Your audience is wonderful. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So appreciate it. Y'all are so great. And um, I love that the message here is you, you can transform your life with positive communication and positive accountability. You can transform uh, your life and those around you. Oh, you know, I love having you on the show because you are just a positive ball of energy and that po positive ball of energy just shines, you know, straight through. You're like that inside and out. So when people come to you, you know, they're going to get they're going to get responses, positive responses, because you put your heart into it. And you can see that just by the way you are, your personality, your knowledge, you know, everything, you know. So it's I, I think it's great what you're doing. I, I am I am honored to have you on the show because you are just an excellent you're just excellent at what you do you know and the way you think and the and the strategies you put together are so powerful and people you know to implement those strategies into their into their business and into their personal life people can just thrive it's more than just accounting it, you know it, it goes further and it goes deeper it's the principles these principles will get you further in life it's just breaking them down and explaining the principles just like you did today people will thrive you know we're not here to survive we're here to thrive and it's easy to to with 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 hard work with you know with making things a part of your life and you know making it a daily routine and continually you know trying to be better and better and better at it you can just thrive to no end and you're teaching people that and i i admire that and i admire you and i thank you so much for being on the show today because you are amazing oh ditto stacy ditto let's do it again sometime yes definitely and you have a great day and a great weekend you too thanks stacy for having me on thank you oh you're welcome bye sweetheart